You've likely heard the Onion Router referred to by its more common name, which is Tor. Tor is a free tool that allows you to browse the web anonymously, and it works by routing your IP traffic through a free worldwide network that contains thousands of Tor relays. And these relays work to obscure your location from anyone who may be monitoring your traffic. Tor constantly and randomly changes the way that the traffic is routed so that no one could watch for any types of patterns in order to determine information about a user. Tor will relay through at least three relay servers, so as you can imagine, there's a performance trade-off, and internet traffic can be rather slow when you use Tor. Many Tor users employ the browser to hide their activity from websites that will track their moves. Uh, and it's no secret that our browsers track our searches in various ways, and they track what we look at, and then they use that information to target us with specific ads that they hope will catch our eye. So getting around that type of tracking is one practical use for Tor. Other practical uses include journalism. Journalists often use Tor to communicate more safely with whistleblowers or dissidents. A special branch of the U.S. Navy also uses Tor for open source intelligence gathering. Many law enforcement agencies also use Tor for surveilling illegal dark web portals. Now on the flip side of that, Tor has also been adopted by those who wish to perform various deviant deeds on the dark web or also by threat actors. They can employ Tor to hide the tracks of their malware. Tor encrypts the application layer of a communication protocol stack multiple times and then relays the data through several randomly selected Tor relays. Inside the encrypted data is the next node destination IP address. And each one of those destination nodes are encrypted inside a separate layer. So each relay server will decrypt a layer to reveal the IP address of the next relay in the circuit and then forwards the remaining encrypted data onto that node. At the very end is what's referred to as the exit node. This is simply the last Tor relay where the encrypted traffic exits to the public internet destination. As you can imagine, the exit node is typically the target of any type of surveillance because this is the point where traffic can be intercepted and read. It goes without saying that there is great risk at hosting an exit node for this reason, and in fact, many organizations and ISPs will block Tor exit nodes. These nodes have been known to attract attention from local and federal law enforcement agencies. You can see that if I go to google.com in my Tor browser, this takes some time to load, by the way, due to the relaying through the multiple servers, uh, but once it loads, we can see the Tor relay circuit that was used, which goes through, in this case, Germany, then France, and then to an exit node in Canada, so we reach the Canadian version of Google. We can use an option in the menu to create a new identity, which will simply reload the browser and, again, randomize our Tor relay path. So if we again go to google.com, this time we reach a German exit node, which takes the path of Germany, then Netherlands, then back to Germany. Now, as for me, I don't want to sound like a, a crazy paranoid conspiracy theorist, but I personally do not use Tor unless I use that through a VPN connection. The simple fact that you are using Tor is seen as cause for concern by agencies like the NSA, and they, they've said as much. They consider people using Tor to be up to no good. And so I, I won't dive too deep into that realm, but the fact is that without an encrypted VPN tunnel, your ISP can see all of your internet traffic, and the use of Tor could certainly put you on someone's radar, even if you're just using it out of sheer curiosity and innocence or for the privacy of your own browsing data. So be aware of that if you want to give Tor a try.